Hey guys, Andre from High Performance Academy here. Welcome along to another one of our webinars. Today, we're going to be diving deep into the world of PDM CAN communication. And I know that probably sounds, first of all, completely dry and boring and also a touch scary. I know a lot of people that are installing power distribution modules into their cars tend to stay away from the CAN side of things and stick to wiring in conventional switches and well yeah it's going to work it's going to get the job done you really are leaving a lot of the power and capability of the power distribution module on the table if you don't use the CAN communication functionality. If you're sitting there wondering what on earth I'm talking about, don't worry, everything is going to become clear as we go through today's lesson. But before we do that, uh, just to get you back up to speed on what's been going on over the last couple of weeks. First of all, we've got about seven or eight hours left of our MoTeC giveaway to run. So one last opportunity, let me just get this big bad boy up here and uh, it kind of dwarfs me. This is MoTeC's largest, biggest, baddest display that they create. This is the MoTeC C1212 dash unit. And you can use this for so many purposes. Not only is it a driver display, we are also including with that giveaway their reversing camera. Uh, so you can have part of that display essentially work as a reversing camera. Obviously great for your street car, but if you happen to have a GT3 style race car and you want to know what's going on behind you, uh, you can incorporate that too. You see that on most of the GT3 style race cars already pretty commonplace. Now, while the C1212 does come with a range of pre-configured display options that are going to suit most people, uh, you can also use the optional included Display Creator upgrade that we're offering with this giveaway. And Display Creator essentially allows you to make your own displays and you can really configure that to your heart's content. Only limiting factor there is your imagination. Uh, it's not included with this giveaway, but uh, of course, as with all of most text dashes you can also add the logging option and then it becomes a complete central logging hub you can use Motex uh, advanced i2 data analysis software to help improve the driver the engine and the chassis so a really really powerful dash display unit uh, on top of this we're also including our VIP membership as well so that gives you access to every course that HPA currently offers you're going to get free priority access to every course we ever produce in the future forever as well as free lifetime gold membership giving you access to our webinars like you're about to watch here as well as our private members only forum total deal package package deal there uh, is a touch over six thousand us dollars so this is a great one to get your name into the draw for so if we just quickly head across to my laptop screen for a moment uh, this is the page you'll come through to if you click the link that scott is going to drop into the chat uh, you can look at everything that's included in that package deal. Uh, there are a few different options there as well to give you a few more entries into the draw. Completely free to enter, uh, no strings attached here and we will also ship that free of charge to your door uh, no matter whereabouts in the world you are watching from. So don't think you're going to miss out, we've got you covered. Again, only eight hours left to go on that giveaway so make sure that you do get your name into the draw. And if you are watching this later on in our YouTube, sorry you missed out but we do run these giveaways ways fairly frequently so check hpacademy.com uh, and you'll see if we're running a current giveaway. Right now I wanted to bring you up to speed with a project that I did introduce quite a while ago uh, which is our FJ40 uh, fuel tank build. Now Traditionally, so far, High Performance Academy has been best known for our courses related to engine tuning, engine building and wiring, but uh, we have branched out over the last couple of years and specifically uh, cover race car development, race driver education. We are also covering motorsport fabrication as well because this is another area that we know there is a lot of misinformation. We've got a lot of uh, members and I know a lot of enthusiasts out there who want to learn these skills so they can do more uh, themselves. So uh, we decided 
decided to take the plunge and move into fabrication as well. So we've already got our Motorsport Fabrication Fundamentals course that's been out since around about the start of this year. Uh, we are very close to launching our Motorsport TIG Welding, Practical TIG Welding course. Uh, this should be out within the next week. So particularly if you are watching this later on on YouTube, it's definitely already going to be in our course archive. And one of the last parts before we could launch this was a worked example that we're going to add into our library and this was a aluminium welding worked example which we know a lot of even professional fabricators do struggle a little bit to lay down really good quality consistent welds on aluminium. Uh, so we decided to show you exactly what's involved. So if we jump across to my laptop screen I'll just take you through the project uh, and I have as I said introduced this briefly in a past uh, webinar but we'll go over it. Now this is the fuel tank design. Obviously when it comes to designing uh, components like this there's a variety of ways we can do it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the old fashioned uh, sketchbook a pencil and a ruler you can get a, a great job done these days with the accessibility of uh, products like fusion 360 uh, it does add a lot more flexibility to what we're doing and namely in this one as well in this design here brandon who drew this up in fusion 360 uh, then allows us to basically send off a file to a local sheet metal working company and then they can laser cut the parts out of aluminium sheets so essentially it should fingers crossed all working properly I uh, fit together exactly as per our plan if we jump too further too much further into this that's the basic design and uh, particularly in this shot here you can see that internally we've got some baffles that are designed and there's two purposes for those baffles one uh, is to actually add some rigidity and strength to what otherwise would be a relatively flimsy tank uh, particularly if you ended up putting a, a bit of pressure down in the middle or from the underneath it's obviously going to move around and bow uh, so the internal baffles stop that but obviously the other uh, aspect with those internal baffles is to help reduce surge or fuel slosh that's going to go so far but with an EFI vehicle obviously we need a constant supply of high pressure fuel so that is where uh, the radium fuel surge tank comes in as well now I've got this sitting beside me it's probably going to be a little bit hard to get too much detail into it but uh, this is a unit that runs the industry standard uh, bolt pattern at the top here so this will bolt into essentially any uh, existing fuel cell and it contains uh, a lift pump which we've got here as well as a two litre surge tank uh, with a high pressure lift pump in it I'll get that out of the way uh, for now but uh, as well as that it's also got a fuel level center so it's a nice compact unit and that's what we incorporated into the design there now back to my laptop here I'll just go through the process here so uh, some of the parts obviously as delivered from the laser cutter and again the ability to send those files through yes we could have hand cut these but honestly uh, the time saving of having them laser cut it uh, if you value your time at all it's almost certainly going to be cheaper in the long run to actually have a company laser cut this it's, it's not a huge amount of money to get that done and the accuracy of the finished product is going to be a a lot better except for in our case the first time they sent through the parts cut from steel turns out that they didn't actually read the information we provided them so you know accurate to a point but we still couldn't fault the actual product they delivered even if it just wasn't the wrong material anyway second time was the charm and we ended up getting them delivered in alloy there you can see the baffle section all assembled up uh, there is this angled section here on the tank so one of the uh, really key aspects with aluminium welding is really the preparation and the parts fit up uh, that's really the key to getting a good weld and anyone who's good at aluminium welding will tell you that most of the work actually goes into the preparation preparation if you get that all right uh, then the actual welding process should be relatively straightforward this parts preparation starts by preparing the edges that have been laser cut and here Jimmy's using just a simple hand file to get back to the nice clean bare aluminium beneath where it's being laser cut finishing that off as well with a deep bearing tool on both edges that just removes any swarf that is left uh, next step there is to just scour the surfaces on both both sides of the material with a scotch bright pad and then finally we go over this with a clean rag with some acetone and this just removes any potential contaminants from the surface any oils or anything of that nature and gives us a nice clean surface to start the welding process with 
Once everything's cleaned again it's just some basic fit up here and one of the problems with aluminium of course is it's not magnetic it's non-ferrous so this means the typical fabricators magnetic clamps uh, aren't really going to be that useful. Fortunately this particular tank actually sits together quite nicely so it's pretty easy to get everything fitting up. Uh, Jimmy then got into some tack welding and what we're trying to do here is just provide some tacks around the perimeter enough that we can just get everything aligned make sure that there's no gaps between the the uh, components and make sure everything's where it should be. A little trick here uh, when you've got a panel on an angle like this what we've found works really well is capped on tape which actually comes from uh, the wiring side of HPA it's a high temperature insulating tape and it's good for just holding components in place while they're tack welded nice thing is it's very heat resistant and it doesn't leave a residue on the surface which is really important for TIG welding so you can see we've got tack welds on the corners and perhaps every couple of hundred millimeters in between again just to make sure that nothing moves around one of the parts is a little bit trickier with this construction is with the top of the fuel cell we've got this machined alloy plate that is tapped and threaded uh, drilled and threaded I should say for the bolt pattern for that fuel surge tank as you can see though it is quite thick and this can be a bit of a stretch for some of the 200 210 amp uh, motorsport uh, TIG welders it's going to take a lot of heat so uh, one of the tricks that uh, you can apply here is to actually preheat the thick material just using a butane torch doesn't need to be given a massive amount of additional heat sort of 20 odd seconds with that butane torch is just enough to bring up the surface temperature enough to make it much easier to get a weld pool forming and once that was all set up uh, Jimmy could then weld the top in place uh, there's a slots here that where everything slots together so you can see one of his finished welds here and if you have done everything right this is the sort of surface finish that you should be able to achieve with your weld everyone wants that nice stacked dime appearance but again with welding aluminium uh, there's a lot that goes into this uh, primarily in the uh, preparation as I already mentioned obviously your welder settings are critical and what we've done within this course is we have a material specific section and for each of the common materials you're likely to come across uh, we've got a range of base settings that you'll need to use including uh, what sort of amperage you want to use your gas flow uh, what sort of cup size your uh, tungsten tungsten angle uh, filler rod basically everything you need to get yourself up and running uh, once the top was welded in place Jimmy could start laying down the external welds and there was about six meters of linear welding on this tank so suffice to say a uh, pretty good way of getting a lot of time on the TIG torch another aspect that's really easy to overlook with a job like this is to make sure that you handle the cooling uh, of the finished product obviously aluminium is very conductive material so it does tend to heat up and we simply used a fan that we used for actually cooling our workplace and placed the uh, the tank on top of that for a few minutes in between welds and that was just enough to get it back down to uh, a workable temperature so uh, if you are interested in learning more about TIG welding and we don't just cover aluminium basically all of the materials you're likely to come across mild steel, uh, chromoly, stainless steel and even titanium are all covered. You'll learn how to use uh, gas lenses, uh, you'll learn about back purging as well obviously very very critical for the more reactive materials like stainless steel and titanium. Uh, that course should be out within the next week so you can check back at hpacademy.com forward slash courses and if you are watching this in the future on YouTube we'll chuck a link in the description you can follow uh, in order to get to that course. Alright moving on our latest episode of the HPA Tuned In podcast is now live and this is one that I was really excited to do. This is an interview with John Shepard who is uh, probably one of the reasons that I actually got into drag racing in the first place and uh, back in the days John Shepard was really well known for his Talon Eclipse, his DSM Talon Eclipse, we'll jump across to my laptop screen, uh, a really pixelated uh, photo of that Eclipse just about lifting the front wheel in the ear 
Now I will, will apologise, I actually forget how quick John actually ended up going but deep into the, the sevens with that eclipse from the best of my memory it's something like about 193 mile an hour. Now yes there's cars that are much faster, uh, boost in performance in particular with the 4G platform are uh, knocking on the 6 second door at well over 200 mile an hour but John set these times back when no one was anywhere close and uh, he was definitely an inspiration to me, one of the reasons why I started getting involved in import drag racing and ended up building my own Evo. Uh, never quite managed to break into the sevens but we did go eight twos at 180 mile an hour so I don't think we were really mucking around. Uh, John is probably these days best known for Shep Trans which uh, builds all manner of high performance transmissions for just about any fast car that uh, is currently popular. Uh, big movers in his shop were, are still the the Mitsubishi and DSM brands but more so these days the Nissan R35 GTR platform as well as more recently the Audi R8 and Lamborghini Huracan platforms as well with their dual clutch transmissions. So really interesting conversation with John. One of the takeaways for me was uh, we talked about his own Audi R8 uh, makes around about 17-1800 wheel horsepower, uh, runs into the high sevens yet is completely streetable and to me that is just nuts. The ability for a car making that much power to still be 100% streetable, still have air con, still have leather interior, uh, still be able to rock through your local McDonald's drive through absolutely insane. Anyway, if you want to hear, hear more from our interview with John, check out the HPA Tuned In podcast. You can head to hpa-tunedin.com to find out more, but also search for HPA Tuned In on any podcast platform that you're currently listening to your podcasts. All right, we'll just finish off with a last reminder that Motec C1212 giveaway eight hours left to run not much time absolutely free to get your name into the draw six thousand us dollars worth of value not only do you get the dash you're also getting hpa vip membership it is an amazing deal we'll ship it free of charge straight to your door so please head to the link in the chat to make sure that you get your name in the draw and don't miss out all right thanks for watching give me a few moments here and we'll get started with today's lesson if you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.